Hi, Emily here. A handicapping video. Very excited about this race. The Grade 3 will come. I hope I'm saying that right. Uh, we'll go with the 11th race at Fairgrounds on Saturday. This is a three-year-old stake race. Um, all these horses earning points towards the Kentucky Derby. From a handicapping perspective, this was a, a really fun race for me to dig into. And I think there's a lot of good information in here from plot, notes, trip, um, you know, really excited and buckle up. This might be a long video, but um, we've got some good stuff here. So we're going to start at the plot. Uh, pretty standard for these handicapping videos is just get a feel for pace, race shape. And um, I think pace is going to be a huge key to this race. And it's important with these three-year-old races we've talked about before. A lot of these horses don't have established form. So uh, can't go, you know, off the plot verbatim, but you can get a lot of information out of it. We can dig into the grid, kind of get a better idea of, of the pace scenario and go from there. So um, a couple things just kind of right off the bat as I'm looking at this, you know, we have, um, we have a contention. Uh, I'm sorry, let's start with the speed rating. Uh, speed rating at 8, but a lot of horses that are making their first start, I'll go to distance, at um, at a route, so you have to we have to figure out where you you know stretch out horses five, twelve, nine, and uh, a couple other horses in here that are um, have shown they can be closer to the pace than maybe the plot is giving them credit for. So um, if I'm just looking at this here and and taking into consideration, we've got the five who um, who's a presser type, but we'll see because he's one of those stretch out types, and the nine who um, is completely confirmed front runner in the 12 must talk about um you know again stretching out where he's going to be in this race so if we're just looking at from the distance perspective um nine horses here and we've got six of them um six of them that are 100 percent to the left of the y-axis uh one two seven eight ten eleven and then the four is kind of in between so um, potential for a lot of horses to be on or near the lead. And um, what I did from there, I'll go back to standard, and we'll just kind of see, you know, where the 5, the 12, the 9. You know the 9's going to be way out in front, to that big square out there. Um, it's kind of uh, a getting into the grid of, of where these horses are. So what I did is I, um, I pulled this up earlier, just kind of make it a little bit smoother transition, is I wanted to look at horses that um, have won doing their best running on or near the lead. So uh, filter is kind of arbitrary. This is what I decided to to um, to input. So being on the lead at the first call, just put in a one and that are still on the lead in the stretch. Um, of that, we've got seven horses here. One, four, five, seven, nine, ten, and eleven have done their best running on or near the lead. So it just tells me you know, they may or may not do that. You know, we've got some, you know, the nine, of course, we talked about five, um, our stretch outs. Whether they're going to they're, they're gonna do that or not, but at least that gives me one scenario. And so when I go back to the plot and I have this on standard, and I, I kind of see that and I've got a feel for this race, I want to look at these squares. I want to look at a horse that's going to be finishing. So regardless of where they kind of are on the plot, that's what I'm going to begin my handicapping is looking at those squares. So let's go uh, Let's go left to right, and I'll talk about these trips. We'll go through each horse. So um, left to right, let's start with the nine. Let me go over to uh, one of my grids here, and we'll just, you know, we'll look at the nine individually. Um, so running mate, the nine horse, um, 10 to 1 on the morning line, making a first start at a route. Uh, Best, uh, both wins were, were on the lead, open link wins, uh, Delaware, 87, optics figure, huge improvement, um, first out versus winners at fairgrounds, B+, plus, no push, extended comment, um, good one here, one with E is nice colt, and then, uh, at the, uh, Sugar Bowl, B-, minus, no line, shifted in slightly to the right-handed whip and ended up getting disqualified. Again, close to the pace, um, you know, nice, nice winner that day. So I, I would look at this horse, maybe this is a, a, a best of the speed type. But from that nine post, we've got a 12-horse field. Um, you know, they're going to have to use. Saez is aggressive. This horse has natural speed. Be a real shame to kind of take him out of that race, um, take him out of his race and, 
you know, potential best of the speed if uh, we think that's in there. So, um, you know, 10 to 1, not bad. Um, just kind of going through through my notes here um, on this horse. Um, kind of nothing to knock other than, you know, if it does get hot, could get a little bit vulnerable late. Does have to answer the question about the two turns. Um, you know, we shall see. Let's keep working. Um, we'll go to the 10 next. Uh, down here in quadrant three, not the most favorable. Um, you know, he's got a little bit less to that second call speed than, you know, some of these other horses, but, um, you know, still a square. So let's take, let's take a look at this horse. We'll go, um, go over to the 10, plug him in. Uh, making a fourth start, debuted at Keeneland, close flow, that was at six furlongs, they stretched out, B minus, second start, then one with the B. Um, you know, this horse made an easy lead, had some pressure, you know, really good ride, had some pressure, but still able to control the, play, the pace, um, kind of setting his own fractions, drew very smart, you know, opened up on the field. He looked like he was all out late, um, and so, I, you know, I, I wasn't that excited about the way this horse finished and um, with that kind of trip there's other horses in here that are faster again he is a square I just feel like there's some others that are just going to be um, a little bit faster um, kind of get the jump on him and be able to be able to out kick so six to one a horse I'm going to I'm going to label as as no value you know we'll go back um, kind of labeling the nine um, you know, I kind of just have a question mark on this horse. Um, you know, I, because he's 10 to 1, if he's any shorter, I'm just not, I'm not really interested. Um, the distance is a big question to me, but at least we know where he's going to be in the race. All right, let's keep, uh, keep moving on. Number 8. Um, this is a nice horse. Guess Sweet. So uh, we can see he's making, he's got some seasoning to him, making that fifth start, third start at a route. Um, we'll start off at Keeneland here, B move, um, nice race, well-timed move, first run, had all, had the momentum for the stretch run. He backed that up, and, um, this trip was super impressive to me. I thought, I came out of this, I was, like, really excited about this horse. I thought, um, this horse actually ran better than McCracken. Um, I should probably go back and watch it, but... Moved early and right up and tight behind horses, lack room behind horses in the stretch, let out clear but too late, ran on with interest, looks to handle more ground and has some quality. So this was a this was a real striking effort. This day, um, this horse was it was it out and out single, handled his business, strong win, um, as the favorite. So a lot of upside on this horse, distance not gonna be an issue, you know, never really won't run a bad race. Uh, just really solid horse, nothing to knock here. Five to one, great price on a horse like this. Quality, um, has questions, got that nice position on the plot. Um, you know, square, sitting mid-pack, versatile, um, definite, definite must-use. Um, probably just kind of off my handicapping early. This, to me, looks like the horse that should be the favorite. Um, so five to one on a horse that looks like uh, the the horse to beat is very good value. So we'll go to the we'll go to the 12 next. Um you know, an interesting horse. The 12 um oh, one click too many. All right. Let's go to the 12. Um again, a horse that's that's on the improved the question mark right first route B trouble plus uh still won by open links had trouble through the final turn proved best solid win B plus slog uh sluggish start winning from the back you know close late I went back and I, I watched this race I thought you know he definitely had some pace to run at um in that in that Louisiana juvenile uh kind of a late lead change but I mean we're sort of being picky he was, uh, I would say, if anything, it's it's greenness more than, than anything, a physical issue. So, so still a little bit green. Um, I'm just not, I'm not crazy about this horse, but watching him physically, getting two turns. So, um, you know, I get five to one on Guest Suite. I get five to one on Sates Fan. This is just a no-brainer bet to me. Um, just, this horse is going to have to prove it at two turns. Um, I'm not one. I don't look at pedigree too much, especially after the horse's 
has run. That's the most important thing to me. Um, using my eyes and again, practice kind of has given me the confidence with that. Um, you know, there's one of those things, just this horse to me just does not look like a two turn horse. He's going to have to prove it, especially if he's a short price and, you know, has that name that I, I understand the morning line because, uh, you know, this horse in Louisiana is probably going to take money just, you know, based on the name, based on the wins alone. So, um, no value to me, a uh, horse I'm, I'm probably not going to use on top as one of our, as one of our squares. We'll go down to the number two. I almost skipped this horse. Arklo. Um, we'll pull him up. Arklo is the maiden in the race. Uh, B last time, pocket saved. Uh, the winner is also, is also in this race. Um, the number 10 we talked about earlier, takeoff. Um, just kind of chasing him in the lane. I, I thought this horse, you know, is B is a good race. You know, the winner had the had the jump, had the pace advantage throughout. I thought maybe if anything, a little plotty, um, uh, maybe even a little bit grip minus. Um, we'll just have to see as this horse develops. Speed figure wise, when we pull up the whole field, just looks a little bit below. I know some of the horses we've seen already are like the mid to upper 80s. So this horse has to has to take a big step forward. Um, Ten to one again on this horse, just. You know, even from a plot perspective, um, you know, down in quadrant four, um, sort of almost moving towards quadrant three, um, down there, not the most favorable plot position, and uh, two lengths back, maybe he's more of a presser, just pace scenario, don't see it, and just doesn't seem quick enough here, uh, need to see more. Another thing about this horse is um, he's got some gait issues, he's been slog a couple times, he's been trouble start, so... Always something to, to take into consideration, breaking from the two post in a full field, um, you know, could be, could be an issue. Uh, let's move on to the number three. This horse I am extremely interested in. So this horse here, to, uh, totally, totality, um, whatever he's called, the number three horse, 12 to 1 on the morning line. This horse is actually making his uh, fourth start. The Remington races, um, we switched everything over with Briz. These races are being added. Um, so I'll talk about that race when we get to it. On debut, um, broke, his, broke his maiden, had a no lead. Um, kind of a good race. There's some horses that have done done some good stuff out of that race. Um, I'm trying to think. J-Boy's Echo, who finished second, um, you know, has, has a lot of upside. Nice horse. Bit green won despite being on wrong lead and tiring late. Um, just really thought, if anything, this horse was uh, needs that two turns. And we can go back, and I've talked about this before, how using the scratch information is super important. Um, he was entered uh, back in September, the end of September, in a turf race, entered as MTO. So they wanted to get this horse going long. And, um, you know, then probably, I don't know, whatever the condition book is, they ran him at six and a half. He still won and uh, should be better at more ground. This next race here in November, this is facing winners. Um, this is kind of a sneaky good race. He finishes fifth, beaten seven lengths, but there's a lot going on in this. Trouble start, tactics to move, trouble plus BTL and improve. We've got four green keywords and a high grade. Lunged at the break, steadied off heels. He raided off the pace under a hold, responded when asked for run on the far turn, tried to move inside, got blocked, checked hard, move out late, spit, split horses, and came with another late run. This horse showed some gears, and he showed some some ability to deal with uh, to deal with some trouble. This is a really sneaky sneaky trip on this horse. Um, I I like this effort a lot. I thought this horse showed showed a lot of maturity. Did not have a clean trip. Um, you know, was still running on late. A lot more going on than what you see in this running line. I think this horse is capable of sitting closer. You know, if he gets away clean, always a question. Um, but kind of a presser mid-pack. We had him down in quadrant four. I'm going to close this tab. It keeps getting in my way. Down in quadrant four, but, um, you know, four lengths back, three and a half lengths back. Maybe he's further back if the pace does get hot. But, um, you know, in a good spot that if there is some contention, we'll, we'll be running on. Um, I'll talk about that Remington race. Um, he, 
Again, had some more trouble in there. Uh, studied early, another sneaky good race. Showed a couple moves, had some trouble. One that's worth worth watching. Um, I like the rider change. I don't think the horse um, necessarily got along with the rider, though he has shown trouble in both those last two starts, so it is a question. Whenever you have a young horse that's getting into trouble a lot, um, you wonder, is it the rider, is it the trip, or is this just a horse that finds trouble? To me, at this price, um, kind of going off what this horse has shown, he's worth another shot. Um, considering a pace scenario, considering a square, I'm very interested in using this horse. A lot of value. Um, good tournament play. Probably a horse that's going to get overlooked. Um, you know, just depends on how they bet. But this horse is kind of dirtied up from a speed figure standpoint right there, right? Mid-80s. Um, definitely, definitely fits. We'll go to the number one next, because he is a square. Um, is he? No, definitely not a square. We're going to go over to the uh, the number six. Sorry, jumping around a little bit. Um, number six horse here, Marco Mischief. So we've got a horse that is making his first start on fast ground. B minuses in both starts. So a little bit below, those are at maiden level. Again, we want to see horses getting B plus when they're breaking their maiden to go up against winners. So big class hike, has to do something new. Those two turns on, on the fast track, you know, so some question marks there. This horse is 20 to 1. Definitely makes sense that, that morning line. Um, let's go through our squares again. The last horse we'll talk about, I know he's not a square, but he's a huge circle. Um, and I'm talking about him because he's above the par line, and I think that there are some, um, kind of some interesting trips on this horse. We'll go through, uh, debut at Saratoga, gallop improved stretch, so should handle more ground. At Keeneland, um, sloppy track, which by the way, I, I looked ahead at the weather, and there is a good chance we're going to have an off track on Saturday. So, um, you know, adjust handicapping as needed. But um, again, back to this horse, uh, B, breaking his maiden, sloppy track, two turns, perfect trip with slog. And there's a little bit more to this trip. This horse, you know, this horse broke slow and then just kind of never really was in the right spot. Um, got a little rank early, was kind of between horses, just not a good trip for him, to be honest. Um, not, not ideal, did show some run in spots. I think that was a capable of an improve. And then... Um, back that up with with a good win at the fairgrounds again going two turns wide trip um towards the top proof best sharp angle out so um needs to move forward a little bit low 80s um could get you know i think that the reason for this we'll look back um this race being rated in there i think factors in um, we have horses that are lightly raced. Again, like I said, why well, you need the grid to just kind of see. Um, but the fact that this horse is high up there, has, uh, has those trouble lines, 6 to 1. A little bit more upside. I don't know if I'm necessarily going to label that value, um, especially considering it's a circle and I'm, I'm kind of beginning my handicapping with, with these squares. Um, that's where I want to go. But um, I did just want to talk about that horse. A um, couple other things, a couple other horses to mention. We already went over the 12 um, from pace perspective, sitting closer to the pace. So I'll talk about both the other. Asmussen horse, um, you know, the three is the one I prefer. I think the horse is going to get a good trip, more upside. The number five, um, nine to two on the morning line. Actually, this is the, uh, the morning line favorite here. Really interesting uh, morning line favorite. I don't know um, if that's necessarily going to be the case. This horse is, um, where is he on here? Over in quadrant two, again, first time route. Pull up the number five. Um, speed figures definitely on par. Perhaps that's the reason, you know, an open length win last time. Facing winners for the first time. First time going two turns. Um, I watched this horse again. This horse, this horse definitely has speed. Um, player on speed figures, going to be forwardly placed, um, should be on or near the lead. Visually, it's another horse to me that just does not look two-turn. This horse looks like a, a one-turn horse, you know, seven, eight furlongs, but at that one turn, this horse looks like he's going to be most effective. 
Um, another horse is just not good out of the great out of the gate. We have that slog trouble start on debut, and then kind of broke out a little bit. Um, nothing crazy, but you know, broke from post eleven. Did kind of break out a little bit. So um, you know, has some issues, has some questions. To me, if this horse is uh, is the favorite in this race, uh, definitely a play against um, big time. This horse would would have to prove it. I I would have no problem with that. Um, let me just kind of make sure I'm not leaving, leaving anybody on this field. Oh yeah. I said, I'd talk about the seven tip tap tap is our, um, last time out Delta down Delta jackpot did have a little bit of trouble. Um, moved a little bit early wide. The note on that dropped shorter. Um, this is a horse that's never also should be forwardly placed. Um, just, I'm not excited about the trip that this horse is going to get. He's a circle in quadrant one. Looks like a, another pace pace factor, pace casualty. Um, lacks a finish and kind of just lacks some quality. So um, if I'm getting if I'm getting a twelve to one on the seven or twelve to one on the three, it's kind of a kind of a no brainer to me. Um, really fun race. Uh, I'm excited. I tried to make this video short, so hopefully I was talking fast and didn't didn't leave anybody out on this. Um, kind of going through again. Um, you know, let's look forward to this race. Look for some value. Again, the number eight looks to me like the horse to beat. The three with some horse some value and some upside. Um, hope you guys got a lot out of this video. We will look forward to another video later. Um, still going to go over the Smarty Jones. Always open to suggestions on races, questions. Um, hoping to do some live stuff soon more interaction with um with people that are following this channel and um and yeah and get more involved and we'll be at the nhc next week i want to do some live stuff from the nhc so we'll just see how that goes all right thanks again and uh look forward to more, more videos and keep supporting the channel thanks